Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back in automation with the Ellisbury update and our Kikars campaign in Gazmir, Gazmian muscle at its finest. And we are about to uh, get to the gentleman's agreement. The gentleman's agreement which was slightly tweaked by my company. And of course that tweak is going to go into the Electron MK2 and uh, it is. Uh, the, the power limit, well, the, the rules of the gentleman's agreement, once again, well, you probably know by now, but were that at the time they decided to not step on anyone's toes and accept the most powerful engine that was in that class as the power limit for that class of engines. So, well, key cars it is and 550 gets up to 200 horsepower. <laughs> so that will be our limitation. Um, if I can't make something that is even more ridiculous somehow, hmm, maybe. But as someone rightly pointed out, we are not really tied to that power limit if we just do not sell those cars as key cars. But um, then I'm, I guess what, what's the <laughs> What's the purpose of this role-playing then, right? So, no. Um, we could make something more powerful. And we are going to try and put it into a facelift here. And just see what we can, can make of it. Like, um... Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm considering making a facelift. But we did see that the engineering times were ridiculous. So, we would have to sacrifice... Um, making... The making of these cars. Wait, do they have... Let, let me check them out, because if they can be produced in a tiny factory, we could spin one off. Like, slap down the engineering sliders of the engine, make a bonkers-ass race version of it in a facelift, and put that in a car and produce it um, in uh, before 1990. So this is the maximum version, and... The Sport 3 GT3, yes. Let's have a look at this one. 52 sportiness, yes, I remember now. Uh, let's have a look. And we do have... Um, because we could produce that one in just a... A tiny factory if we wanted to. This is all fine, of course, but... Uh, chassis, no, monocoque. Okay, so it doesn't work. Can't produce the car in that, but can we produce the engine in that? So, uh, the engine could be revised. We currently have... Yeah, all the bottom end components are fine. Turbocharger is fine. It is mostly about the fuel system. Oh, it already has a race intake. All right. Race intake, yes. But only turbo mid-headers. There is not that much more that we can get out of this. As we saw previously, it was something like 20-ish horsepower. And I really like the from a me mental state point of view. The, the nice and round limit of exactly 200 horsepower. So I think I'm going to stick with this and just uh, occasionally try to make more ridiculous versions of it, which uh, might be uh, um, kind of Halo Cars-esque for this, which we then can produce in a tiny factory. So what we need to do now is basically sit on our butts and wait, because we are sw swimming in money we are paying back all the loans. Let's see how bad they are. Uh, not not too bad. 16 million. Oh, some, some leftovers in here. Remaining loan. Um, 900 million. <laughs> uh, yes. That, that's uh, quite a lot of, of cash. But it's fine. We're still making a monthly profit of 230 million. That's uh, pretty good for a small car producing company like us. We are a small car company but not a small car company. But let me try something out, just to be sure that we are not leaving loads of power on the table, because who would want to do that? So uh, what I'm going to do is, mm, yeah, well, new engine project and just, um, just try something out. All right, the i4 powerhouse draft version. So because inline fours are very easy to configure with twin scroll and that, will be quite nice. Let's see, engineering time. We do want to have that pretty low. Let's go for cast iron, which makes things quicker to do. 
Maximum size, 660. We're going to underbore it. And now, uh, well, tool over head cam, I guess. 54% familiarity, not too bad. Oh, wow, okay. We do have seven quality available there. Uh, let's put in just six or something, or five. It's good to have that amount of quality lying around, just to uh, get engineering time down. Uh, if we were to build something ridiculous, I don't think we had any issues with the cranks, did we? No. So it is light. Ah, yes, VVT. Hmm. Tech pool used for unlocks. I, 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 I. But we do have some tech pool left after it. Uh, that's an adequately sized turbocharger for this engine. Uh, not really, but um, uh, let's see what we actually need afterwards. Uh, maybe go to three and a half bar boost or something. <laughs> no, three should be enough. Per cylinder race, and we go for Super 98. Okay, let's see what we have here. Hmm, doesn't look all too great just yet, but it has not undergone any kind of tuning. Let's open up the exhaust just to be, get, just just to get rid of it, the problem. And now, turbo configuration, let's do it. Um, okay. Well, um, we, we do have a number here. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you see this? <laughs> it is a high number. It's not a useful engine just yet, but uh, it is a very high number. <laughs> Almost 300 horsepower. Oh, there, there you have 300 horsepower. Um, this is, is almost a little too good to, <laughs> to leave it. <laughs> but <laughs> we just upped it by another 50% if we were to uh, release this one. But this is also slightly ridiculous, isn't it? Let's see if we can uh, make this a little bit more usable. Do we have any kind of problems here in terms of... Um, in, in terms of valve float? I don't think so. Knocking is a problem. Oh. Oh, I see. Um, well, that, that is more power. This gives us a bit of leeway to make this one spool earlier. See, like this. And we can... Uh, we do need to get this down a little bit in size. Oops! Failure due to knock. We're still running into knock after all this. Maybe I need to crank this one up. What does our timing map look like? Should, should have a look at this. Oh, okay, I see. <laughs> Somewhat ridiculous. Uh, mechanical stress, ooh, just just 92%. So, uh, maybe more, mm. oh, we, we do need this. Yeah, way better. And we just have to handle the surge stress. Well, unfortunately, this is the 660 version, so, hmm. Got a, uh, no wait, this is the family capacity. That's the wrong tab, this one. You need to screw down a few notches, which leaves us with less than uh, 300 horsepower. But yeah, that nicely shows what is possible with uh, <laughs> some appropriate tuning. Is the answer to just rev higher? Does that seem appropriate? I think it does. If you look at this here, 13,000. Yeah, sure. Let's see where... Oh, <coughs> whoops. Now, oh, there we go. That isn't looking too bad. 270 horsepower out of 550. 277. That's a nice number. But now, I think we, what we need to establish is if we can somehow cram this thing out and put it into a car before the deadline. Engineering. Oh? Okay. The answer is yes. Like, look at this. 28 months for this thing. And, oh, if we can get this out, what would the, the goal would be to make a car to go along with this one so that we just can put it onto the market, build in its own little shitty factory on a contract, engine contract, and then as soon as it's out, we just cancel it. Because it's going to utterly destroy our reputation. <laughs> it's so bad in terms of reliability. But it does make a lot of power. So seeing that, I think we can optimize out a few more 
a few more little, uh, little horsepowers out of this one. But before we do, let's make a tiny kind of track car because this is this is no this is not even for track cars it can only really be driven in that very top range of its power band and like just look at it it's ridiculous um what we're going to do is build a car around it and just see if that works and if we can put it out like real quick track demographic it is manually built this one I did see something here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Should we take this one? I, that, that would be fantastic. I mean, the Electron is already that thing. This here is even faster. Look at this. Frontal area, just 1.2 square meters. While the Electron that we chose... I think, I think we chose this one, right? Um, that one has 1.5. It's massive in comparison to this. So what can we pick to make this real fast? We can make it out of aluminium. Um, yes, we probably need to because fiberglass on this small body will mean something for safety regulations. But if we sell it to the lure, they don't really care. And the engineering time is basically nil, so it's fine. We are going to build this on a space frame because that can be made in a shed. And just steal front longitudinal it is. Oh, this no, wait a sec. This one is should we should we try and get a mid longitudinal? Yeah, this is definitely a car where that would be in order. Double wishbone. Oh wow, we have so much chassis quality that makes cars come out <laughs> so quick. Yeah, double wishbone, yeah, we, we can even make this car good so that it sells. Just a little bit of quality here, doesn't hurt. We had 38% 30, engineering time. Existing engine, we take the powerhouse, it's put in, and we go for <laughs> all-wheel drive. <laughs> we would have to, really, to put the power down in this little shoebox, but uh, let's try rear-wheel drive first. Or manual five gears, of course. 340 won't suffice for this one. It's tiny. Like, look at this cross section. It's like a toy car. You know what we need in automation? We need a bobby car prop. Of course, it can't be can't be exactly that, but the equivalent of one. Oh my god! Driving this thing with an open diff, yeah, <laughs> have fun. Uh, helical might be the way to go, but it also is lots of engineering time, but probably not the biggest vector in this. So we should be good. Uh, put on the biggest tires you can, really. Oh my, that's that's not, not very large. It looks large, but it's, it's very much not. Magnesium it is. Ah, oh, we can put bigger tires in there, can we? Yes. Oh, <laughs> 295s. Oh yes. And now we're going to put some rake on this one. Uh, no, wait, wait a sec, that's the wrong thing. That, no, no! <laughs> ah, damn it. Okay, 295s. I wanted to change this, not the rim size this time around. Uh, so we can make them smaller and put a massive rake on this. And it looks stupid as fuck, but uh, we can fix this. That's, that's better. Not quite right. Yeah, okay. That's looking good in air quotes. Um, and sports tires, of course. We do have 38% familiarity with fully clad. Should make use of this. Not make the vector too long. We can pull down on cooling a bit more. This is not a reliable car to start with. What? Is this the hardtop version? Didn't mean to, sorry. Um, where do we have the standard coupe? Koopy bastard. Should we take a fastback? Yeah, like this. I think that's better. Oh, it, it's the exact same. Cool. Uh, now, interior. None. Yes. Perfect. Luxury cassette and sports interior. Two-seater. Could make it a one-seater if we wish. That would really limit sales. But maybe it would limit sales so much that... Uh, 
the gentleman's agreement doesn't quite work for this. Uh, <clears throat> we, we shall see. Uh, now, power steering. <laughs> nope. Traction controller. Nope. Uh, still uses unlock points. Just takes 20 months of engineering now, though. Because we have this massive amount of research put into it. Advanced AD safety. That would make sense. Okay, and there we go. This is the first time through. And it does look reasonable so far. <laughs> okay, this doesn't. <laughs> oh, this engine would need something like 10 gears to even be functional. All right, let's put the speed limiter at 300 kilometers an hour so that we are just below the limit. Let's see, are we? Speed limiter, come on, there. Now we're below the limit. Question, is this a good car? Answer, no, definitely not. This is not the point of this one. Oh, we are arriving at 195s to get proper grip in the front. And the brakes need to be optimized. Uh, let's see, where do we have brake fade? There, no, still doesn't start. Ah, let's leave it at 200, that's fine. And now, rear force, and we should see some upgrades too. Drivability and sportiness. And indeed we do. It's almost okay now. Ah, pesky, terminal oversteer. Yeah, we haven't done suspension tuning yet. All right, need to get rid of this. So, steering behavior. Fixed the slow steering. We are at 54.8. And if we go further to the plus side until it's gone, we have lost some sportiness here, but uh, we are now at 55.5. So in this case, it is worth it to eliminate this. All right, I'm uh, happy-ish with this one. Comfort is slightly on the low side, <laughs> just ever so slightly, but it is a race car, so what what do you expect? Failing safety standards, uh, yes, um, all oh, right, mm. ah, damn it. Uh, where do we, where, ca where can we sell this thing? Probably not in Fruinia, not in Hedvesia. Yeah, yeah, here they are fine. All right, if we just look in Fruinia, oh, we can sell it, but they kind of hate it. And here we are failing the safety standard in Hedvesia. Maybe we can also only sell it in... Uh, what is the safety? 31. Yes, maybe we can only sell it uh, in the 80s because the 90s safety standard is going to be too harsh. So we need to get some cars out, out there that <laughs> just sell before. What a shitty car. But oh, you, you, you have to do what, what you've got to do. And this is looking fantastic. We can smash this one out there, no problems. There we have a setup for 28 months. Uh, now, let's double check how much time we actually have. 30 months, if I see this right. Yeah, 30 months until this car is out. But because this is an entirely new build, we would have plenty more. Because we can just release it mid-89 if we wish just need to sell enough cars <laughs> okay now I finally finally get to see the upper gearbox line for the first time yeah you wouldn't be putting a big gearbox on such a tiny engine uh, you would have to in order to make it reliable oh that's an interesting one if we lower the boost limit we actually make more power 280 exactly that is that is very nice. That is very nice. And we are even having boost from 9,000 to 11,000 RPM. Yeah, I, I'm happy with this. It is a shitty engine, but man, is it powerful. <laughs> that is uh, pretty impressive. What is the horsepower per liter here? So it's 280 divided by 0.55, which is 509 horsepower per liter. And of course, now, let's do a pull. Uh, 
it's a good thing we changed away from it being a convertible. <laughs> this would not be going so well. Uh, let, let's hope they don't introduce sound restri uh, noise restrictions as well, uh, or regulation. That would be quite something. Oh, I forgot body quality once again. Um, so that will up some stats, make it better, and not too much worse in terms of engineering time, because we have tons of qu uh, quality there lying around, or tech pool rather. And I, I think this is good. I is this is this what we want? Is this what enough people are going to buy? Is more the the question. Thirty one safety. Hmm, yeah, that's not enough for the nineties, I believe. If we take this away, and no, Frunia didn't like it. Okay, what was wrong in Frunia? Low reliability. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, in Hedvesia, it is. It doesn't pass the standards. And in Gasmir, they are just like, what the hell is this? Okay, back to engineering. Nothing has changed. Excellent. Uh, well, engine has changed slightly. We do have another month easily. It's fine. So now. This is so being quite a project here. Uh, we can set it up and just produce it in a contract, in a defunct contract, which is no longer defunct then. So select the engine. We do require forge works as well. That is very costly to put in here. And now, how much does one engine cost? Oof, uh, ow, okay. Well, 14,000. That's uh, more than what we sell our normal cars for. But you know, who said we are supposed to make profit with this one? <laughs> that is for other cars to do. 29 months, sign it off. That's good. And now, factory management for this one. Um, we need a new factory. Or did we have a defunct one? Wait, wait a sec. Did we, did we have an old one just lying around doing nothing? Uh, this is, let's delete it. Uh, we do have... Do we not have an old one? No. Okay. Well, uh, let's let's make a, a small one that we can throw away. Who's going to buy our cars? It's Gasmians, supposedly. Let's make a tiny factory. So tiny it is. Staff required. 92 people. And this car is beyond saving in terms of reliability and reputation, destruction and so on. We are going to uh, just cater to the markets normally. Target shifts are at one. It's easy enough to get all the stuff that we need. Let's make it at least somewhat good. And yeah, yeah, there's not much margin in this one, is there? <laughs> car engineering. Uh-oh. <laughs> the car engineering itself is mega expensive. Can't make cars in the modern era and just make them in a shed if you try to sell them for 30k or whatever um yes okay so uh, automation levels uh, can go up slightly and tooling quality max oh we see a positive number and we're just going to pull down that slider recall chance we're not going to like this is per month and right? per month we have a one percent chance of this triggering if we just produce it 12 months we do have a, uh, well, it doesn't quite work that way, but about each 12% chance that we will have a recall. The correct way of calculating this would be, what is it? Um, 0 0.986, right? Yeah, and that's the remainder there. Um, and that to the power of 12. Okay, so that tells us, that's 84.4, that tells us that we have an 84.4% chance that there won't be a recall. Oh, we just put the margin to zero, we do not include any of the tooling costs, we do not include any of the engineering costs, and we do a forecast. Can we even sell a single car? Uh, no. All right, we need to make it less extreme then. How do we do this? Well, first of all, suspension tuning. <laughs> we can make this slightly more comfortable. That shouldn't be too hard. 
And let's see, interior, maybe we, mm, no. Sports interior is where it is at. Alternatively, we could go premium to make it cheaper. Another thing to look at is the traction tests, which are looking atrocious, but not for drivability. Only for, well, it's sportiness, because as soon as the boost comes on, you're, you're gone. <laughs> So maybe, you know, we already have the helical diff selected. That doesn't work in our favor. Hmm, it is the interior that we have the most control over, as well as the suspension tuning. This is with traction control, by the way. So that is why we are not sucking completely. Let's, <laughs> let's have a look at this. So we have traction tests, and now we take out the uh, traction control. None, and whoops, ah, uh, yes. Minus 16%. Wow, okay. It really hurts there. So, if we do not optimize the weight to be lighter, uh, the weight distribution, I think, is fine. Weight distribution is towards the rear quite heavily. But this... Yeah, no, it does change a few percent, so let's keep it there. It's fine. Uh, but here, yeah, we can make this more comfortable. Uh, let's uh, reduce the springs... And the dampers. Ah, oh, yes. We're getting into a territory where it's somewhat reasonable. Oh, that was one too many. There we go. It's nicely aligned in phase. Four degrees of roll angle. More drivable, way more comfortable. Huh. Yeah, this, this kind of sucks. <laughs> uh, four cars supposedly are being sold. Double check engineering. Oh, okay, we saved some time here. Let's put it all into reliability. Because the difference between 15 and 17 is gargantuan. It is the difference between leaving the parking lot and uh, getting to the supermarket. Before it breaks down, that is. So, uh, yes, uh, we continue on and see if our forecast now is all golden. Oh, look at this. We asked... No! <laughs> we were selling some cars. No, zero profit. What? Oh, no, no. Here we are selling cars, but with zero markup. Of course, this is zero profit. Um, what we want to do is to lower this price further. We want to sell it for no more than um, 18,000 and just pretend it is a good deal. No, no, what? You can't. Um, damn it! Ah, oh, we can reduce the margin, though. To minus 20, maybe? Calculate forecast. Is this what we can do? No, it resets it to zero. Oh, no, we can't, can't undercut it. That's, that's too bad. Uh, but I think if we are managing to sell a few more of these than what we see here, this should be fine. Uh, deposit. Uh, no, we don't want any deposit. It's, it's good. Uh, can we make this better somehow? I mean, the engine is what kills it. <laughs> can we make the engine more reliable? Uh, no. Maybe maybe that's the way to go. Because reliability partially kills this one. It's so bad. So we don't have any stresses here, apart from it being ridiculously powerful. Maybe we can do this. Just one quality in here that ups the, um, the piston reliability a lot and you see percentage wise there's a massive gain here for the reliability another one in turbo does help a lot too in terms of reliability and gives us some more power oh reducing the boost further also helps and we're still above 280 horsepower so we went from 22.6 to 26.3 we're getting there we're getting there. Didn't, didn't we start at like 13 reliability here? This is, this is double already. Fuel system. Can we get some more out of this? Because that will... No, it doesn't even help <laughs> us that much. Because that's not why this thing is unreliable. Uh, the fuel system is reliable. We could go for performance high, which would kill the power, but make it way more reliable. No longer sucks in little babies and eats them for breakfast. So, mm, header size, I don't think we can make much there. 
Oh, 26.4 it is. Let's see how bad engineering is now. Yeah, not too bad. That's fine. Uh, we can easily uh, do this by... Oh, now we kind of need the reliability slider there. Pull this one down. Can pay through our noses for, <laughs> for the production of this thing. 85 production units. And throw some money at the problem. I mean, a, th a third of our monthly income. Or oh, is it a fourth? I think it's... Yeah, it's a fourth. And no, it's not just income. It is profit. Yes. A quarter of our monthly profit <laughs> for this whole engineering project. I think that's, that's something that we can uh, easily argue for for our um, CFO. So 26 reliability here, 30 engineering months. And we are at exactly 282 horsepower. And up the reliability rating a little bit. Now we're at 41. And come on, come on. What does... Oh! Oh, it's doing something. We are selling more than 100 cars in the first year. At least this is what it tells us. Uh, that's good. What isn't that good is this ratio of costs. <laughs> that is uh, slightly ridiculous. Cars made per month, really? 122. That's big scale production. End date. We have exactly one year there, you see? It is going to be released in 189 and then... <laughs> <laughs> and then we have one year to sell a hundred cars. Otherwise, we say it won't count. Uh, yeah, okay, I think we can do that. What a masterpiece of insanity. The Mini Brute with the i4 powerhouse. Just a throwaway engine and a car. We need to somehow sell a, sell a hundred cars to customers uh, so that we can have somewhat more cushy limits when it comes to the gentleman's agreement. And now we take no loan and sign off these projects. And right now there's basically nothing else to do here apart from going forward to the release of the Electron MK2. Um, there's still no pre-orders. No, there, there it is! <laughs> and there is the first pre-order. The first sucker who bought a car like this. Okay. Beautiful. That means we are going to sell some some cars. Oh, now the pre-orders died again. No, no, there they are. Oh, we are running low end of the shifts for our factories. Did we up prices like ridiculously? I think we might have. No, no, they're sitting at 80%. I mean, we can drop it to 60. All right, accepted both going from 80 to 60 for the nugget and the booby. And the Electron has plenty of cars in stock. How many pre-orders do we have at this point? Just uh, 20? 28? That's a quarter of what we need already. Oh, wow. Okay, the Electron is uh, currently costing us quite a bit. We have so much stock. Oh, my God. Almost 10,000 vehicles each of the MK1. Um... Well, we have something to go through for this fire sale here. <laughs> this will last us a little longer, though. Oh, no. The KC Sport M3 has an issue. Higher factory refresh costs. How much? 15 million? No! Oh, no. Nah. This one, too. 11 million. Where are we going to be at if this continues? <laughs> and there we have it. The Electron MK2 and the Mini Brute have finished engineering. Remaining pre-orders 87. Okay. This looks like it's going to be a, a resounding. Uh, yes, please. We want the gentleman's agreement to be at 282 horsepower. But I think today we have accomplished try hard mode on getting that limit shifted up as much as possible and uh, I think this is a good time to end will we succeed bringing all the new amazing engines oh yes we need to make a facelift a facelift where we get the 660 engines 
out for the 90s. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please smash the like button and uh, pay, pay tribute to the Mini Brute and 282... No, what was it? Fi 509, now more. Uh, 515 or something. Horsepower per liter in a production car. All right, I shall see you guys next time. Next time.